the grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Folks, we've come to a Sunday when we are undergoing new restrictions, which means that only 20 people are allowed to gather in the church building for worship. It's putting a, a bit of a strain on us once again, but we place our confidence in those who are governing us and seeking to, to keep on top of the spread of the, the virus and finding ways to contain it to make our lives easier in the future. But we also gather in confidence that God's Holy Spirit is with us wherever we are. And I know that even beyond St. Paul's, Old Ernach and St. Luke's, there are people worshipping with us. We gather in the confidence that scattered as we might be, God's Holy Spirit is with us as he has promised. And he will lead us through the next 40 minutes or so and strengthen us as we pray together and as we come under his word. So let's now worship God together as we sing, Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. the Psalms are prayers and they inspire prayer in each one of us. And these are the words of the, the psalmist, which are really a declaration of, of faith, that when he comes before God, God hears and God responds. He says, I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Let us pray. God, our Father, in these days, we are asked to be confident in those who govern, in those who administer, in those who are engaged in research. We are asked to be confident in one another, that we will follow guidance and show consideration we are asked to be confident that we will find a way through COVID-19 
and regain our quality of life. We do not despise the skills and expertise of men and women who seek to bring us hope. But on this day, we lift our hearts up to the God revealed in Jesus, and we place our confidence in him. The God who was one of us, who experienced the pressures of human living, who knew the limitations of our being, who even knew the death that is our final destiny. The God who showed that in the midst of brokenness, goodness and love are possible. The God who assures us that even in death his purpose continues. This is the God who reveals himself in the land of the living. The God for whom we wait. He alone can strengthen us from within as we go forward in faith. So stay with us today, our Heavenly Father. Meet us at the point of our deepest need and assure us of your good purpose as we go forward together in faith. Amen. Hi, boys and girls. I'm glad that some of you are looking in this morning. And what I want to, to tell you is that just last week, I had a first time. I had a first time. I looked out the window and at our bird feeder, I saw this fella. Now, I don't know if you recognize him, but he, he's a woodpecker. And I'd seen a woodpecker some time before, some, some years before, but never in my garden. That was the first time I'd ever seen a woodpecker in the garden. And my goodness, he was magnificent, black and white and with that red Mohican on his, on his head. You know, it really was quite startling. That was a, a first time. And first times, are, you always remember first times, don't you? I remember the first time that my dad took me to a football match because I nearly lost my school cap when my team scored, I threw it up into the air because I thought that's what you did at football matches. And it took my dad a wee while to actually get it back. Imagine what my mother would have said if I'd gone back home without my, without my cap. And I also remember the first time I went to the library. My big brother took me to the, the local library and he got me enrolled and I took a book out. I remember what the book was about actually but I can't remember the, the title so we'll just, we'll just forget that for a minute I also remember the first time I went to the pictures I was taken to see The Sleeping Beauty a Walt Disney film but what I remember more than The Sleeping Beauty was the film that was along with it it was another Walt Disney film and it was called Texas John Slaughter and here he is now he was a, it was a cowboy movie, obviously, and he was the, the person that all the baddies in the West feared at that time, Texas John. I always remember that. These are all first times. You, you, you remember first times. And, you know, there are people in the Bible who remember the first time that they understood Jesus was calling them to be his followers. You can read about it. Uh, Peter and Andrew, James and John, Matthew, they all remembered the first time they understood when Jesus was calling them to be his followers, to listen to his teaching, to put it into practice, and to share his love with the rest of the world. And I think that's, that's something that, 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 that we all remember. When we first understood what it was to be a follower of Jesus. Now, we can't meet with, with Jesus. We can't speak to him the way I'm speaking to you just now. But we can learn about Jesus from our Bibles. We can understand what it means to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, I think that one day we'll understand that that's the most important thing that ever 
happened to us. To be with Jesus, to follow in his ways, and to bring light into a world which sometimes seems to be very dark. Now, we're going to sing a, a hymn now about two people who met Jesus and knew what it was to feel the, the power of his presence. We're going to sing it together now. Two little fishes, five loaves of bread. We turn now to God's word, folks, as we read together in the first letter of the Apostle Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5 at verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 5 at verse 1. And we read to the end of verse 4. The Apostle wrote, To the elders among you I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings, and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Thanks be to God. And we read again in the gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 16 and at verse 21. This incident appears very close to the end of Jesus life. Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. And God will bless to us the reading of his word, and may he feed our souls with his living truth. Amen. Let us pray. And these are the words of the psalmist who says, Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. God, our Father, we seek your face in the words of Scripture. And we pray now for clarity. And pray now for commitment. 
that having revealed yourself to us, we will be strengthened from within and go forward as a people of hope. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, in the book of Ecclesiastes, in the Hebrew Bible, you will find these words of making many books. There is no end. There's a lot of truth in that. But it would seem to be the case, particularly with books about Charles Dickens, the Victorian novelist. They just seem to roll off the presses. And the most recent of, of these is a book that is entitled The Mystery of Charles Dickens. The Mystery of Charles Dickens. Now, that's a, a reference to the fact that he was a very complex individual. He lived with a mass of contradictions. There was a huge gap between the public Dickens and the private Dickens, and very often the private Dickens doesn't show up very well. But I think we should be careful about rushing to judgment in that area, because if we're honest, most of us are a bit of a mystery. We can even be a mystery to ourselves from time to time. Think of the Apostle Paul. Paul tells us of the struggle he had within himself when he knew the things that he should do, but couldn't find the will within himself to actually go and do them. He knew the good that should be done, but couldn't find the will to actually work out that good in his life. And the Apostle Peter, well, he would understand exactly where Paul was coming from because he could cast his mind back to an occasion when Jesus told him that he was blessed because God had revealed to him the true nature of Jesus and who he was. Peter proclaimed one day, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, you're blessed, Peter, because God has revealed this to you. But then not long after that, as we read in the gospel according to Matthew, Jesus told Peter that he was being influenced by Satan because he was seeking to suggest to Jesus that there was an easier way to fulfill his calling as Messiah without suffering. There were these two influences acting upon Peter. Now there you have Paul, Peter, two mighty men of faith, and yet they're living with these conflicting forces within themselves. But there were certain things which held them together and enabled them to go forward in the mission that they had received from the Lord Jesus Christ. They were great truths which stabilized them, which in a sense gave them balance in their lives for them to fulfill the calling that they had in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter in that short passage that we read from his first letter describes to us the, the truths that held him together, the truths that enabled him, despite everything that was going on in his life, despite the struggles he had within himself, the truths that enabled him to fulfill his calling in Christ. And the first of these is that he was held together by belonging to the church. He was held together by belonging to the church. He, he describes himself when he's addressing the elders of the church throughout the Roman Empire. He describes himself as a fellow elder. Now, that is quite surprising in some ways because Peter was an apostle. Peter had accompanied Jesus throughout his ministry. Peter had actually heard 
the, the voice of Jesus, the teaching of Jesus. Peter had actually been in the presence of the risen Lord Jesus. He had an encounter with the living Lord Jesus. So he had a, a sense of, of standing within the early Christian community. But here he describes himself quite simply as a fellow elder. The most important thing for Peter is that he is a member of the church. And he's addressing fellow members of the church at the beginning of his letter. He tells you how scattered the church is at this time. Throughout the, the Roman Empire, perhaps there would be people that he didn't even know. But he's part of this great movement which has been inaugurated by the Lord Jesus Christ and is kept going by his Spirit. A movement of people who have in common their faith in the Lord Jesus and have in common their purpose to tell his story and to share his love with everyone with whom they had to do. This is what bounds people together in these early days. And Peter can always be assured that whatever struggles he might have with other people, whatever struggles he might have within himself, he is part of this, the, the most important movement of, of people that has ever been seen in the history of humankind, called to be the salt of the earth, called to be the, the light of the world. Peter's part of this. And that is something that holds him together in all his challenges. And that's important for us to remember in this moment in Christian history, friends. You know, in many ways, the church has become disconnected because of COVID-19. We're not able to, to come together the way we did. We're not able to, to work together. But we never cease to be a community because each one of us has been given the gift of God's Holy Spirit. And it is that Spirit that binds us together even though we are separated by the restrictions that have been laid upon us. We never have any reason to think that we are alone because of the presence of the Holy Spirit and because he has given us one another so that we can still pray together, we can still worship together, we can still encourage one another in so many different ways. So Peter might be struggling at times, but he's held together by his membership of the church, but also by his call to witness to the gospel. Witnessing to the gospel is something that stabilizes him because it's a, it's a purpose that he has in life, a purpose that he shares with other Christian people. He describes himself in that first verse of chapter 5 as being a witness to Christ's sufferings. He's a witness to Christ's sufferings. Now, this is something that, that Peter could return to again and again. He saw the sufferings of Jesus, but he also knew what these sufferings meant. Looking at Jesus on the cross, we, we get an idea of the of the power of human sin. We get an idea of the nature of, of human sin, but we also, when we look at Jesus on the cross, are reminded that the price for that sin has been paid and that it's possible for all of us, no matter what dark clouds fall upon our lives and in our inner lives, we can be forgiven and renewed. And that's a, that was a great thing for, for Peter to ponder from time to time. 
you know, for him to be able to say, well, I, I may not always say the right things. I may not always do the right things. I may be subject to, to dark impulses within myself, but I remember that Jesus has died upon the cross. I remember that I can be forgiven because of that death. I remember that I can start again. Now that's what it means to be a witness to Christ's sufferings. Maybe we haven't seen them, but we have a picture of them in our minds. And we know what that means for us. That we are ransomed, healed, restored, and forgiven, as the hymn says. And Peter took every opportunity to, to remind Christian communities of that. This is the, the thing. I mean, uh, uh, we have to remember that though these letters that the apostles wrote were written to Christian communities who needed to be reminded of the nature of the Christian faith. And earlier on in that letter, that first letter that, that Peter wrote, he says to these believing people, Christ died for our sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Christ has died for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. Now that's something that, that Christian people had to be reminded of. And it's something that we are called to share with a world that is so much in need. These are verses like that one. Um, you know, look it up. First Peter five, first Peter three at verse eighteen. Hide that truth in your heart. Encourage one another with that truth and share it with those who need to hear it. Peter was held together by that purpose in his life to witness to the gospel. And he also knew inner strength in anticipating the glory that would be revealed. You know, he says in, in that, that verse, he describes himself as one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. One who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Now, this has been very much in, in my mind over the past year or so, and it's a challenge for us to think in these terms. But it is at the very heart of, of the gospel, folks, and it's this, that God is, his spirit is in this world, in this moment, is moving through humankind, seeking to engage with men and women to make them new in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That process is going on. God is seeking to make all things new and there will be a climax in the future when the glory will be revealed in a new creation. That's the hope that we have beyond our present circumstances. The glory of a new creation. And what that means is no more viruses and cancers. No more anxiety and depression. No more disappointment and disability. We will live in a new creation where Jesus is Lord. And where his presence fills every atom of existence. But you know with all that. And all of that is so important in our suffering lives. I have a feeling that both Peter and Paul. What they would appreciate most would be that their struggle with themselves will be over. That within themselves there would be no more division. There would be no more struggle. 
between knowing what we should do and actually putting it into practice. That all of this would be behind them and they would live eternally at peace with themselves and with their God. You know, Paul saw himself as, and I love this image, you know, Paul, Paul sees himself as having been taken, as Jesus having taken hold of him and taking him forward into the new creation. And Paul says, he's taken hold of me, so I'm going to keep a grip on him as I persevere towards the new creation. And Peter would join with Paul in that thought. And we can join Paul in that thought today, friends. Despite the challenges that we're facing just now, picture our Lord Jesus Christ having taken a hold of you, expecting you in turn to take a hold on him. And he will take you forward to that day when we share in his glory. Let us pray. God, our Father, in the midst of changing circumstances and faced with uncertainties in the future, we thank you for the eternal things that keep us strong. We thank you for the sustaining fellowship of your church. We thank you for the gospel with its hope of renewal for humanity and for creation. We thank you for the promise that this life, with its brokenness, its disturbances and pain, will give way to the new creation in which every tear will be wiped away. We thank you for all those we have known who held this face, faith and died with this hope in their hearts. Help us to be encouraged by their commitment and their perseverance. Bless those of us who remain throughout the earth. Grant us the will to press on as faithful witnesses, whatever the circumstances. Bless the nations that you seek to draw to yourself. May they find in this time that hope that lives in the midst of all the challenges and will be in the end fulfilled. Bless our United Kingdom. Sustain the leadership in the four nations. Provide resources for all those in surgeries and hospitals. And keep safe all those in frontline work. Bless our families and friends. Draw near to those who are sick or bereaved. Grant peace to those who are frustrated and hope to those who fear for the future. And all of this we ask in the name of Jesus our Lord, who encourages us to pray in these words. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue our worship with the hymn. Through the love of God our Saviour, all will be well.
now may you go in peace as a people who belong, a people called to witness to the love of our Lord Jesus, a people who live in anticipation of the glory that will be revealed and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Thank you.